All right, so our next topic is the classical subject uh, called Ramsey numbers. So for integers, k and uh, let's say positive integers, we say R R K L is the minimum integer n such that any coloring of the edges of complete graph on m vertices with two edges, uh, two colors, let's say red or blue, has a red kk subgraph or a blue kl subgraph and minimum such number is ramsey number and there are many generalizations this is the simplest form you could change the number of colors instead of two colors you can have many colors or you could change uh, Instead of coloring an edge, like pair, you could color triples, you could color quadruples. There are many variations, and all of them have well-defined Ramsey numbers. So for instance, R33. We know it's a 6 because in K5, You have a coloring where no, no red K3, no blue K3, right? So this means, this example shows that R33 is bigger than 5, whereas uh, you must know well, like, if I have a, a 6 vertices, then pick one vertex, and three of these edges are red or three of the edges are blue, right? By prisoner principle, at least three of them are red or at least three of them are blue instantly with this vertex. So I, I can assume by symmetry that at least three of them are red. So these three are the red. If any one of these edges joining the neighbors by red is red, then you have a triangle. So I can assume that, uh -huh, so this is blue, and that's blue, and that's blue. So then you have a blue triangle. So this proves that Ramsey number of R33 is at most 6. So by combining these two, uh, Ramsey number of R33 is 6. But in general, computing Ramsey number is really difficult. So most of the time we are focusing on uh, asymptotics. Like how, how, how fast does it grow? And sometimes you can determine the asymptotics precisely. Most of the time, we don't even have a good bound. If you have a good theorem on asymptotics of Ramsey numbers, you can publish papers in really good journals. And many of these topics were covered in discrete math course or a graph theory course. And I'm going to show you some technique to show the lower bound. So the technique to show the lower bound is the following. If n choose k times 2 to the 1 minus k choose 2 is bigger than 1, or no, less than 1, then Ramsey number of k, k is bigger than n. So you have, if you have integers n and k satisfying this inequality, then Ramsey number is big. Why? Again, we color the edges of Kn randomly by red or blue with the probability half each, okay, independently. 
Now, what is the probability that uh, some, like, and I mean, we need we need to look at the event that uh, there exists the red KK or blue KK, right? For a set uh, R of K vertices, let AR be the event that R induces a red KK or a blue KK. That's a bad event. We don't want to have a coloring having such a thing because Ramsey number is about the coloring without without monochromatic, without red KK or red blue KK. Right, so what is the probability that AR is happening? Well, because we color uh, ran edges randomly, so this is uh, 2 to the minus K choose 2, but there are two colors, so it's times 2. So it's 2 to the 1 minus K choose 2. And then again, probability that the union of all R of size K we take the union of all these things, which is less than or equal to sum of them. And the number of these is obviously n choose k and 2 to the 1 minus k choose 2, and which is less than 1. So this means that there is a positive. probability that uh, none of AR occurs so the Ramsey number of KK is bigger than N all right so that gives us a lower bound on the Ramsey number but this doesn't Look, uh, doesn't look nice so far because you need to compute n and n, which is linear quality. So let's try to estimate it. Right. So imagine, so say n is two to the k over two, and k is n less three. Then let's compute this n choose k times 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus k choose 2 and n choose k is less than n to the k over k factorial this is a trivial bound and 2 to the 1 minus k choose 2 what is that? well it's 2 to the 1 minus uh, k, k minus 1 over 2, right? So n to the k, k factorial and 2 to the minus k squared over 2 and 2 to the 1 plus k over 2. Yes, that's right. Now, what we are going to do And I'm, I know that n is this, right? So this is, so <laughs> that's how I chose n. So this is less than 2 to the uh, k squared over 2, and 2 to the k squared over 2, and 2, right? And these two cancel each other. So what end up is 1 over k factorial times 2 to the 1 plus k over 2. right and k factorial grow a lot faster because each time when k is increased by one you're multiplying uh, k plus one here but here you only multiply square root two so this is uh, definitely decreasing function as k increases so when k is three what you have is three factorial and two to the three over one plus three over two so it's three factorial and uh, uh, 4 square root 2 no is it 
two to the two square root two. Hmm. Yes. So how much? How big is this? This is square root two is one point four something, right? So if I multiply by four, it's less than six. So this is less than uh, less than uh, one. Yes, because three factorial is six, right? So that means uh, range number of k k is at least bigger than 2 to the k over 3 if k is at least 3 so this is how we can get a asymptotics and there are ways to get a better bounds this is a, some just a simple example all right so in these examples okay uh let me conclude the introduction by defining a set system okay a set system sometimes called a family of of sets is uh, collection of sets. <laughs> right, so for instance, A18. This is an example. Right? Something we write F. Right? And we say it's a uniform. Let's see whether I want to have a set system or not. Okay, let's say it's a set of sets. Okay. A system is k uniform if all all its members have size k. Right, and we sometimes we say set system over x. Then we instead of sets, it's the subsets of x. All right, why do I have a color? All right, so that's a uniform uh, definition of the k uniform set system. And this is related to something called the hypergraph. A hypergraph is a pair, free E, of a finite set, free, and a set E of edges, sometimes called the hyperedges. that are subsets of free. So the but so uh, the difference between hypergraphs and graphs is that in a graph each edge just has two vertices. I'm talking about simple graphs. Uh, but in the hypergraph an edge could have many vertices, right? So, uh, set system is actually a alternative representation of a hypergraph. So one, two, three, four, five. So the vertices are one, two, three, four, five, and the edges are one, three, four, and one, two, five. So sometimes we just use hyper, we call something a hypergraph, sometimes we call something a, a set system, depending on the situations. Anyway, that's it.